Hello people of Storyville, how you doing? Compliments of the season. <laughs> Christmas is around the corner, how are you preparing for Christmas? Okay, so we've been reading the book Two Fruits and a Lie and honestly this story has been all shades of emotions. It's been interesting. And just last week we found out that Angie was the prophet. Ooh, it was a very shocking reveal. And this week let's find out what happens. Uh, so if you're new to this channel, do well to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you will not get you will get uh, notified when a new story drops. All right, so let's read chapter eight. <clears throat> Joe was surprised beyond comprehension. How was it, sweet little Angie, who was behind all of this? He could not just wrap his head around the thought that his best friend was murdered by his own sister. Angie was not the friendliest teenager, but. She did know how to show care to the ones she loved. Just as Joe had taken off the hood, the prophet let go of his neck, thus making him to fall to the ground with a loud thud. He tried to get back on his feet almost immediately. He looked up at the prophet, who had now been revealed as Angie. She was standing just a few feet away from him. What you, get, what you gonna do now, Joe? The voice came from what he had known to be the prophet these past days, but it was definitely Angie who spoke. Joe could recognize that voice anywhere. Those words were accompanied by the most evil smirk he had ever seen Angie make. It was almost like she was mocking him. Joe felt that rage again build up inside him. He remembered what he felt like walking into Eddie's room and seeing his lifeless body. He remembered what he felt like to watch his little sister being taken away from him while he stood there helplessly. He remembered how he failed to watch the prophet torture and drain the life out of his mother. All these memories got him so mad, he dashed towards the prophet who just stood there with that evil smirk on her face. Just as he was about to touch her, he felt very warm hands swoop him and grab him before he could understand what was going on. <laughs> he found himself back at the lake with Thim, Makosh and Tiko. Where did you think you were trying to do, Joe? Makosh asked as Joe was trying to catch his breath. Were you trying to get yourself killed? You can't take on her on your own, Joe. I thought she knew that. I'm sorry, Joe said. The turning, then turning to face his brother, he said, It's Angie, Tim. It's been her all along. Tim was so shocked and disappointed to hear that. He had always had a crush on Angie and he was almost certain that he, she had a crush on him too. Now, he was hearing she was a beta. Could this day just get any worse? Despite the way he felt, he knew without a doubt that they had to do something to stop her immediately. How do we stop her? Tim asked, looking both at Makosh and Tiko. Now, we finally know who she is. You would have to kill her in her human form. That would force her to take her demon form permanently and then we can take it from there, Makosh said. Well, tell me why you can't use your powers to just kill Angie. Why I and you worry about saving our little sister. Are you not supposed to be some sort of goddess or something? Why do you want to sit back and have my baby brother do your dirty work? Tim blasted, almost yelling. <laughs> Gaddy Vex. Makosh smiled ever so calmly and then she said, Well, not all deities are savages, Timothy. Some of us are still bound by our oaths. You see, Tim, thousands of years ago, a balance was struck, which prevents deities, demons, and other terrestrials from taking the lives of humans. We simply don't kill them, but we can inflict physical and mental pain. This is the balance that the prophet is trying so hard to break by performing this ritual. So you see why we had to try to match her strategy, Makosh said. Makosh said. <laughs> the boys were wet, quiet for a while. All you could hear was the sound of the waters and birds flying in the air. And then Joe spoke. I know what we must do now. I need to beat Eddie's. I need to be at Eddie's now. What are you talking about? Tiku asked. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What are you talking about? Tiku asked. <laughs> Speaking for the first time since the big reveal. There's no time to explain. 
You all have to just trust me on this one, Joe said. Makosh turned her gaze from Joe to Tiku and then she said, I think he's finally ready. Now, looking back at the boys, she said, I'll take you there, but we will be hovering around just in case things get a bit out of hand. Are you ready, Tim? Joe asked. I was born ready, <laughs> Tim replied with so much confidence. You would need this. Mm -mm. You would need this, Tico said to Tim, handing him his trident. Tim was in shock. He looked from Tico to Joe and then to Makosh, who began to speak now. It's important that you kill Angie with this trident, otherwise the demon will be able to resurrect her. Well, it made sense, but yet, Tim was still wondering why such a powerful object was entrusted to him. Talk it, Tim. I can't do this without you, Joe said. With those words, Tim stretched out his arms and took the trident. There was a very strong wind that began to blow once the trident was given to Tim. He felt like there was a strong storm coming. Close your eyes and take my hand, boys, Makosh instructed. Both boys took a hand each. It was the sound of loud thunder and the feeling of heavy drops of rain on his body that made Joe open his eyes. They were no longer at the lake. They were at Eddie's front yard. Joe remembered how he felt the last time he was here. He had just lost his best friend. I believe you have a plan, little man, Tim said. Yes, I do, Joe replied. They, they are here, Tim. I can feel it. This is where the ritual will take place. This is where Emily is. And you know all of this by a gut feeling? Tim asked. Not just that, Tim. Eddie told me... The best story of his big sister one time. On the day she was born, on the day she was to be born, there was a heavy storm, slightly worse than this, which caused a total blackout. Angie was born right in this house. Now I understand why Eddie's father left. Eddie's mom washed the bather. There's a room in this house that no one is permitted to enter, not even Eddie. I and Eddie had tried to break into the room so many times but failed. It is because of her loyalty to Dark Side that she was chosen to give birth to the beta. Eddie's father knew this, and that's why he disappeared without a trace. Okay, Ensign, this all adds up, but you still haven't told me what your plan is, boy. Give me your cell phone, Tim. Tim reached out into his pocket and brought out his cell phone and then handed it to Joe in the rain. Joe entered the password and went straight to the photos on the phone. Joe knew his brother kept numerous pictures of Andy in his Angie in his gallery and all he needed was one where she was smiling. He found the perfect one and then he said to Tim, I don't know how I know this but I just do. When we find the prophet, I'm going to hold up this picture to her face and say some things you probably would not understand. If I do this right, she will reveal herself as Angie and then it will be up to you, Tim. Tim was amazed by everything Joe had said. How did this baby brother become so wise all of a sudden? I guess my crush was right after all, Tim said. You are ready. Joe smiled and both boys got on the porch and began to head into the house. There was a really awful stench in the living room as the boys entered. It was like something had died and was decaying. The whole house was dark and Joe had to turn on the flashlight. He saw something by the corner. There was a lot of flies around it. And he knew that whatever that was, was the reason for the stench. Both boys moved towards it slowly. As they got closer, they could figure out that it was a corpse. The question was, whose corpse was it? They finally got close enough to turn the body face up and they recognized it was Eddie's mom. Wow. She was decaying already and her eyes and tongues and ears and fingers were missing. Joe nearly breathed at the sight of this. Just then, there was a loud cry from the stairs and from upstairs and both boys knew without a doubt whose voice that was. It was Emily. They dashed to the stairs. As they got to the top of the stairs, the cry got louder and louder. It was coming from the forbidden room. <gasps> the two boys were bravely running towards the door. <laughs> 
but as they got close they were greeted by two